Hello all. Recently, I had a new subscriber write me an email with a few questions. One of the things they asked about was mature bucks going nocturnal. And this is something I've heard a lot over the years. I've heard some discussions on, and I thought about it, you know, in, in all my hunting and, you know, to try and weigh this out. And I just wanted to do a video on my thoughts and, uh, you know, just how I came up with these thoughts and some of the, I guess you call them conclusions, not that it's anything definitive, but just some things for you guys to think about as you're out there hunting and scouting and trying to zero in on these mature bucks. Before I get to that, I do have another tip for you. It's another, it's a postseason tip of some stuff to uh, work on in the postseason. And I also want to give a shout out to Brian, works over at Disney. I was going there with the family this past weekend and uh, I'm checking through the line and he suddenly goes, hey, I like your YouTube channel. So it was the first time I got recognized for doing all this, which was you know, kind of neat with all the people out there in Central Florida area and really not that many subscribers to this. Uh, he recognized me and said hello, so that was really neat. Now let's get to this tip for you. Hello everyone. Season's over, but there's still a little bit of work that needs to be done. This is the best time to go out and do a little preventive maintenance on your stands. If you have any stands that are steel, like my trapdoor stands, the ladders for them are steel, and my tripod stands are steel, now is when you want to go take care of any rust coming on them. A little bit of effort, a little bit of time into treating any of this rust that comes out, these stands will last you easily eight and ten years. What I found works really well is Rust-Oleum makes a rusty metal primer. Um, so you don't have to actually clean up all the rust on it. And it also comes in a nice color brown, so you already you know, have a good camouflage base for everything. If you end up, I've painted entire stands with this and then just hit it with some black and green afterwards. Before you paint with this, you do want to do a little prep work to any of those rusty areas. Easiest thing to do is get some wire brushes. They uh, just work good, just knocking off any loose or flaky rust. Because even if you paint over that and that rust flakes off, then it exposes that bare metal again and you just keep rusting your stand away. There are attachments like you can put on a drill. This will speed things up. But these, it's really hard to get into the crevices, so you still want to use a wire brush just to get into the corners and make sure you clear out any loose roots. Another thing, if you have a grinder, that, if you have a lot of rust, that can speed things up very nicely. But I caution, you don't want to take off too much material. It's very easy to start thinning out this metal. It's usually a very thin gauge to begin with, and you don't want to lose the structural integrity of your stand. Well, that's just a quick tip I have for you right now. Get out there, do your postseason scouting, get all your gear taken care of. Another thing that you don't want to do, uh, forget about is if you have metal chain straps for your climbers. You can spray these with some type of lubricant, even just WD-40, let it all drain out. And once again, you're gonna get those odors out of there before the next season comes around. Talk to you soon. Okay. So let's get into this idea of bucks going nocturnal. Well, in talking about this, I'm gonna start out talking about somewhere far in the northern you know, United States. I'm gonna give you an example of up in Michigan, like northern Michigan on, on a couple of pieces of information and just kind of walk that back to here in central Florida because there are some differences. And you hear, you know, we all you know, listen to different podcasts and read different articles. And a lot of this information comes from, uh, you know, areas further north, not just here in Florida. So when people talk about bucks going nocturnal, they're kind of just mentioning, you know, they go in, they're, they're, they scouted them, they've seen them, they see them during daylight, and then all of a sudden they don't see them during daylight and they're, all, like, they're only moving at night. And, you know, by definition of nocturnal means you're, you're a night, you know, either a night animal or moving only at night or being active at night. And I'm going to give you a few numbers to kind of show you that, well, this is technically true. 
I don't feel it's necessarily a pattern change, that the Bucks have changed their pattern, which is what most people insinuate by saying they've gone nocturnal, that they've changed their pattern to more nighttime, when actually I think their patterns probably stay fairly cyclical. It's just that our photo period, the amount of daylight we have, that's what's actually changed. So here's some numbers I got, and this is like the northern end of Michigan. Taking, you know, the day August 1st, a lot of people are out there scouting and looking at these numbers and this is not even just you know physically scouting but when you're looking at your camera pictures what are daytime pictures what are nighttime pictures when you're looking at these so sunrise to sunset on august 1st up in michigan is going to give you 14 and a half hours of daylight add another 15 minutes of like shooting light on each side of that you're looking at a 15 hour window in which you can either scout these deers you know from the roadside or where your cameras are going to pick them up in daylight time. Now, if you move up from that point to December 1st, you know, with the tilting of the earth, the days get shorter. On December 1st, you only have nine hours and 18 minutes of daylight. Add a little bit of time to each end of that for, you know, shooting light. And you're down to just 10 hours of daylight in which to hunt these deer. So you, from August 1st to December 1st, you've lost five hours of daylight in which to essentially hunt these deer. That's five less hours in which you're going to see them during the day. And what's important about this, if you think about five hours, that's a long sit in a stand. That's a lot of time where you could be out in the woods and have an opportunity to see these deer. And it's not that maybe their patterns have changed. The deer you see at seven, eight o'clock at night in August could still be doing those same patterns in December it's just been dark for three hours. So this is, you know, this is kind of the point I want to drive home. I don't know, I don't think the deer are really changing up too much. Sunrise and sunset triggers movements from them. That's definitely true, but there's a lot of other factors involved with this. On top of just this photo period, you want to remember, once again, we're still working up in this northern area, you know, Michigan. The deer are going to be putting on, one, they're growing their antlers in the summer, got to pack on the calories. Got the rut coming up, they're going to pack on the calories, and up there, they have to get through the winter, so once again, they're looking to pack on the calories as well. They're going to be doing a lot of movement, even the days are so long, you know, 15 hour long days, they can't just feed at night. They got to be out there putting on those calories during daylight times, and so this is why we see them when we're doing those early season scoutings in those kind of areas. Now, bringing this all back down to the central Florida area, for most of you who are my subscribers, you're all Florida hunters, and how does this work into us? So here's a couple, you know, pieces of information. I took Ocala, using Ocala as kind of a central point for Florida. And in Ocala, August 1st, you have 13 hours and 30 minutes from sunrise to sunset. Throw 15 minutes on each side of that for, you know, that twilight time, which we call like shooting light. And you got 14 hours of daylight which is a considerably, you know, long day, but once again, not as long as up north in that. And even, you know, here in central Florida, even though we're close to the equator, our days still shorten by a considerable amount of length. On December 1st, we go down to 10 and a half hours of daylight, adding on that, you know, extra 15 minutes each end of shooting light. So you're looking at, you know, 11 hours of, of shooting light for the whole day. And so we've lost three hours, which once again, three hours is still a considerable amount of time in which you could be spending in the woods or your game cameras can be capturing these deer in daylight. You lose those three hours. So these are things I want to consider. So we're looking at our photo period here and we haven't lost as much light like up north, but there are some other factors that kind of can, you know, skew this idea, kind of give you this idea that the bucks have gone nocturnal. So if you're out there scouting, aside from the longer fo photo period, pre-season, not a lot of pressure on those deer. And as you come into, especially gun season, like if you've gone out the opening day of gun season, it's a caravan of trucks into the woods. It is blatantly obvious to the deer in the woods that something is going on, something is different. Everybody's out there with their headlights. People are putting stands up everywhere. There's a lot of activity in the woods. And any buck that survived three, four years or longer is going to be aware of this very keenly and instantly change a lot of their patterns. And when you think about the terrain we hunt in in Florida, 
I don't think, you know, a buck's not going to get to be a mature buck by walking in open fields or the edge of forest lines where they're an easy target. If they do that, they're going to get shot pretty quickly. And this is a lot of how I set up and scouting for my spots to hunt. Florida has all that underbrush and it's very easy for those deer, particularly the mature bucks, to learn, find roots through this thick secure cover to get from point A to point B while avoiding all of us. And I think that's something that happens more often than it's not that the deer go nocturnal and only move during the night. A mature buck, he's wise, he's smart, he learns to stay in the security of cover, right? Some, you know, everybody likes to hunt these, you know, nice open areas of oak trees and that, and yes, you can get a nice deer out of there, but that really mature buck, he lived that long by knowing, by learning not to go into those open oaks during daylight. He's probably going to be uh, right hunting, you know, right in the edge. That's actually one of my hunting spots from years ago. There's a big oak area towards the north. And actually the biggest deer I've ever shot, that big, uh, eight point I probably showed in other videos, I was about, you know, about a thousand yards in from the edge of where that oak stand was. Figured he'd be out there as, long, as well as many other deers during nighttime, but I wanted to hunt an area where I knew he was going to stick to the security of cover, but find that opening under that cover and get a shot at him. So that's something to think about. Don't kind of, you know, it's easy to get you know, frustrated, you stop seeing deer as the season goes on. I think it's more pressure and the deer are just wise. They're smart. It's not so much they're going nocturnal, they're just getting smart and knowing how to avoid us. Um, sometimes you have to switch up um, how you're hunting or, or switch up your locations. Earlier in this video I did you know, the whole preventive maintenance on my stands. I have, let me count real quick, I have about seven stands and I get almost all of them out every year. And this year alone, there was three stands I never even hunted. Even though I put them out there, uh, things just weren't happening at those stands. I had a camera out there, nothing was going on. I said, no point in hunting it. Even though there was activity out preseason, for whatever reason, things just shifted up. There was no activity there, so I didn't hunt those stands. So that's a good reason to have multiple locations, some multiple stands out there. And uh, don't give up so much and just kind of, you know, think that the bucks have gone nocturnal and you're not going to see them. They, don't let them outsmart you like that. They're out there. They're moving in daylight. Um, I still get some pictures of daylight bucks. You just got to, they're going to shift their patterns. You got to shift yours as well. So hope that was helpful to you all. Some thoughts to think about. Like I said, it's not a concrete, conclusive thing, but... It's just something to keep in mind as you're hunting and if all of a sudden the deer, you know, just stop appearing and stop showing up, they may just be moving on a different pattern or a different area. Good luck out there. We'll talk to you soon.